Yo, how's it going people? If you ever struggle to create unique atmospheres for your Citrons tracks, then in this video I'm going to show you a simple way to create tons of unique atmospheres out of a percussion loop. This video is split into three parts, well, four parts. In the first part we will take a percussion loop and we will use a granular synth to completely transform the way it sounds and make it much more interesting. In the second part I will show you how I mix as I produce. And in the third part, we will transform it into a massive atmosphere that floats around the stereo field. And in the fourth part, as a bonus, I will show you a few more ways where you can use the granulated sample that we have. So let's get straight into it. So step number one, take a percussion loop. It can be anything. It can be a loop, it can be a fill, it can be one shot. In this case, I took a fill. Next step is throw this into a granular synthesizer. That is to completely transform the sound into something else. So if you're using Ableton, you have a couple of options. My favorite one is Pitch Loop 89. So don't be too intimidated by the way this plugin looks. It's actually really simple. You can see that says L here and right here, left and right. This is essentially a delay plugin. So if I increase the feedback, you will hear this is just a delay. <laughs> simple, but it has a really unique feature and that is this infinite button. If I play any sound and press this button, it would loop the audio and repeat it infinitely, essentially turning this device into a granular synthesizer. So let's increase the dry weight to 100%, then we will record the sound and press this button. Nice. Now that we have this massive sound design sample, we have plenty of options to choose from. So the next step is cutting this into segments and choosing the best sample. Remember, it does take time and the attention to detail is what matters in Citron. So take your time, choose a couple of samples that are sounding good for your ears. I will choose this, I will delete all the rest. Let's solo this channel and we have this. This is sounding really cool, I like the sound has like this introduction into the percussion. Much more unique than just having this. The next step is that we need to mix it. Why do we need to mix it exactly? Well, an atmospheric sound is a sound that will be sitting in the background of our mix. So, notice that if I zoom in, there is quite a big difference between this and this. We want to get them closer together, or basically flatten the sound a little bit. So there's two ways to do that. One of my favorite way is just using a clipper. I'm using the crispy clip. It's really simple. I'll play the sound in the loop, we'll turn the ceiling down, and you will see exactly what's happening right here. Before and after. Notice that we didn't lose any of the sound quality, but we have gained so much more space in the mix. Have a listen again, and this time look at the output meter. Let's start with the plugin on. We are picking on around minus eight. Let's turn it off. We are picking at zero, that's something like eight dB. Let's turn it on again. Now it's very important when you want things to be a little bit louder, but also if you want to put them in the back of the mix. If you want something to sound a little bit more punchy, yeah, leave the transient, it will appear like it's in the front of the mix. Another way you could do this is by using a compressor. You can take the glue compressor, if you're turning the attack all the way down to zero, and increasing the release all the way up, and increase the ratio, now this compressor is really aggressive. The attack means that the volume fader will go down immediately, and the release means it will take a while until it goes back to zero. So let's see what the effect of this is. So let's play the sound, and then I will turn the threshold down. Let's turn it on. You can notice that here the sound actually got a lot quieter. Let's turn it back on. Notice how loud is it. So with the compressor, we actually lost a lot of the dynamics. So if I turn the compressor off, 
Let's go back to the crispy clip. You can see that we didn't lose any loudness, but we actually squeezed the dynamics. So notice the difference between the crispy clip and the compressor. How much quieter it is. So my favorite way is to use the crispy clip because it's a really transparent way to compress sounds. Okay, so I'm working on this beat. And I want to add this like massive atmosphere here. So let's go to our delays and reverbs and we will choose the Valhalla Supermassive. Let's start by increasing the warp and the density. Sounding good, let's increase the feedback a lot. Let's shape it a little bit with the EQ. So let's cut some of the lows and we will cut some of the highs. Nice, so we have this massive atmosphere, but here's the bonus part. There's so many other things that you can do with this sound design that you just made with these percussions. Let me show you some really cool uses for it. So the first one is just transforming this sound. So I have a pack of Ableton racks called Audio Alchemist Collection. It's a combination of 13 audio effect racks and three instrument racks. Let's grab the Frequency Forge. We'll put it after the delay, and this has a really cool effect. Let's click on Wah. Sounding really cool. Let's check another preset. How about texture? Sick. Do you love this? Do you love this effect? I absolutely love it. Feel free to check the link in the description for these Ableton racks. But this is not all. We can do some more stuff with it. So I've added a snare. Let's start by adding a channel and let's copy and paste that sound design that we had before into this new channel. We will use a different segment. Nice, just a really cool groove element. We can also layer it under every kick. So let's grab another channel and we can do something like this. If you want to spend just five minutes a week improving your music production skills and join my growing community of Psytrance producer, then subscribe to my email list in the link in the description. And now that you know how to create some cool sound design, you probably want to know how to make some of the fundamental Psytrance elements, starting with the snare. So make sure to watch this video next. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace and love.